chapter number 5, Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, as we continue our study through uh, this book, as we're trying to find uh, what God has for us and teaches that um, a life with God gives us purpose and drive and, and meaning, and a life without God uh, leaves us empty and nothing to live for. Those of you know who've sat through my Sunday school class and, and through sermons that I preach, uh, you know I don't skip the hard parts. I think of a guy as an honest teacher and preacher of the Word of God. Uh, then you just preach it and let the chips fall where they may, right class? So uh, that's, that's how it is, at least with me. And today we're going to talk about a subject that always, uh, always sparks conversation. And the wise man here in his book begins to, to, to teach us some things from Ecclesiastes about uh, the subject of money, M-O-N-E-Y. Now, I don't know of anything that causes uh, more controversy than, than money sometimes, right class? And you better shake your head and say yes a whole lot for Sunday school today. Uh, it'll help me get through chapter 5 and, and hopefully some parts of chapter number 6. few things cause as many problems as money does. In fact, in the United States, if you do the statistics and do the research, you'll find that debt is the number one contributing factor uh, to, to divorce in our land today. And not knowing how to, to, uh, to handle money sometimes causes a lot of sleep, sleeplessness, it causes stress, it causes so many other problems. Uh, how many of you uh, on the lighter side of this subject uh, for those of us who are married, have come home and you bought something and your spouse says, hey, you spent that much on that? Come on, be honest. Don't you sit there like a bunch of dead ducks today. George, you paid how much for that? Yeah, I sure did. By the way, that pair of shoes you bought was worth about a third what you paid for them. And don't put it in your closet of 50 other pairs either. Right? You guys got to help me today. You know I'm right about this. Few things cause as much controversy uh, as money does. In fact, one of, the t one, one, of the, one of the favorite things that we like to talk about today is the price of gasoline, right? By the way, it's cheaper in Rushville. I'm not telling you to go over there, but it's cheaper over there. And guess what we do? We talk about it, right? Yeah, we do. I want you to see what the Bible says to, to have uh, what the Bible says to, has to say about uh, some things about about money today, and let's face it up front, out of the gate, uh, it takes money to survive in this world. Amen. It does, um, and how we handle it is, is between us and God. I think if we all look back, there are times we, that we could like to have a makeover or a redo or a remodel. That, that's something we did with money that we could have done better with. But that's true in all areas of our life, right? Not just with dollars and cents, but it's, it's true in every area of the believer's life. We look back and think, man, I wish I had done this a little bit differently. But I want you to first of all see in verses 5, in, excuse me, in chapter 5, verses 10 through 17, I want you to see what the Bible has to say today. So in Ecclesiastes 5, verses 10 uh, through verse 17, the Bible says this, he that loveth silver or money shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase, this also is vanity, or this also is, is meaningless. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them, and what good is there to the owners thereof, saying the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich shall not suffer him to sleep. There is a sore evil. That's an interesting term in the Bible. Uh, if you want to sound spiritual sometimes, the next time you have a problem, say, you know what? I've got a sore evil, right? That's what it is. He says, there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a, son, uh, begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry in his hand. And this also is a, here it is again, 
And there, this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit had he that hath labored for the wind? All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. I want you to see some things concerning problems that arise with money. And you know money is no different, and it's a necessary thing that we must have in our world. Uh, that's, why, that's why every time we have a service here, guess what? We take up an offering. You know why? Because it takes money to operate, right? Amen? It does. But sadly, for, for many people, uh, the Bible begins to teach us, and there are also some very positive things uh, that we can do w- with the giving of our money and the way we spend, spend our money. But there are, in these verses, sadly, uh, for many people, there are at least five problems that money surfaces here. And I think you see it in verse 10 where the Bible teaches us that for, for many Americans especially, uh, because we do live in a very blessed land, do we not, friends? I mean, uh, America is a very blessed land today. And, uh, and I mentioned it uh, some time ago uh, that for the first time in many, many years, there are more jobs than there are people to find jobs. And if you talk to any employer in Connorsville today, I promise you they're looking for good people, Right? And there's plenty of ways to make some money today. But we're going to see, first of all, some problems with money. In verse 10, the Bible teaches us that the more we get, for many people, the more they want. If I have money, I will never be satisfied with enough. It's what the scripture was talking about there, back in verse 10. He says, he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with, with silver. He that makes just money for a living uh, is not going to be satisfied with that. If I love money, and by the way, it's, it, it is the love of money uh, that gets so many people in trouble today. And it's true not just of money in our world, but anytime we priorita- prioritize things over the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to get in trouble, whether it's money or anything else. Right, class? Right? We've got to be careful that God always has first place. And we'll see in the Bible today that anything that we have, and uh, you know, I learned this many, many years ago, that uh, we don't need a whole lot in this world to get by. Uh, We need something to eat, and uh, I've had plenty to eat this week, haven't you? Uh, We need clothes to wear. I'm glad you came with clothes on today. Uh, We all got plenty of clothes. Uh, We got a roof over our head, right? And last night we slept someplace with a roof over our head. And it was either hot or cold, whether however you like your house or wherever you live. I mean, God has supplied for us, right? And, and class, I, I remind myself quite often that uh, whatever state I find myself in, I've learned to be content. You know why? Because Jesus Christ has first place in our lives. And that's what brings satisfaction. That's what brings joy. And that, that's what brings hope. And, and money is something that God blesses us with. Uh, to get by in this life, but sadly for many, the more they get, the more they want, and they're never satisfied. It's like, if I just make another hundred dollars, it'll make me happy. Well, guess what? You can make another hundred dollars this week, and the next week you're going to want some more. Listen, our happiness is not found in dollars and cents. Our happiness is found in the Lord himself. Amen? That's where it's found. I mean, he's the one who's got eternal life taking care uh, care of us, right? I mean, it's not the money we have in the bank, because very honestly, uh, when you're gone, it stays here, and and somebody else is going to get it, right? Whatever it is, how big or how small, somebody else is going to have responsibility of it. Second, we must see that the more we get in verse number 11, for many people, the more we spend. The The more we get, the more we spend. The more I have the more people there will be to want a piece of it, right? And I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that it's wrong uh, to to have a job, and I think you should work if you need to work, and if you want to work, I think you ought to. And there's nothing wrong with with, with money uh, being used for the right reasons, but man, there are so many in our world today who've got the priorities messed up, and they think if they just have money, and, and they think if they just have possessions, and they think if they just have newer car and newer houses and newer boats and newer motorcycles and and all this stuff. And listen, let's face it, we've uh, been around the block in this class more than once 
And a lot of people have made some very uh, disastrous mistakes in buying all this stuff that they never could afford, and they thought it would satisfy, they thought it would make them happy, they thought if anything would do it to fill a gap in their life, it's more stuff. And you know what I say about stuff? That's why the trash business is exploding today, because you and I have so much stuff we store it up, and one day it all gets cleaned out, and it goes to a dump somewhere. Amen? We have so much that God has blessed us with. Listen, we know today, at least we should know, as God's people this morning, that what brings happiness to life is not just uh, having more money in the bank. What brings happiness to life is knowing God and loving God and serving God. You know why that's so true today? Because the best things in life I learned many years ago are not going to be bought with my money. I can't buy it. The best gift I ever got was free. You know what it was called? Eternal life. Amen? Think about that for a while. God just gave it to me. I didn't buy it. I could never work for it. I'll talk more about that tonight in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter number 2, in case you're interested for tonight. A little heads up there. But listen, the best things in life today are not things that I can just go out and buy. You know what? You can buy health insurance today, and by the way, it's very expensive. But you know, who, you know who supplies health today? Do you know why you're here today? It's not because you had enough money in the bank to get here. You are here today because God Almighty chose to bless you enough with the health you have to get here today. Right? Try buying that. You can't. Our world is so messed up today, and they think, man, if I just become a millionaire, man, th that'll bring happiness to my life. You know what, today? Here's the difference I found in life, and I've known a few people, not a whole lot, who have been very rich by the world's standards, and guess what? They're not necessarily happy people. I know some other people who are very rich today, but God has first place in their life, and they're very happy people. Amen? You know the difference? Some prioritize God, and some don't. That's the difference. Sometimes there are people in our world today in verse number 11 who seemingly try to get more and more and, and yet uh, the happiness scale doesn't correspond to that what they get. There are people today who have so many things and they, they try to figure out uh, what it is that's missing in their life and in reality what they need is God in their lives. In verse number 12, the Bible teaches us there's also a negative to having so much. It's called lack of sleep. One study determined that as income goes up, so does insomnia. I guess that's why, I read that verse in the study this week, I guess that's why I sleep so well. Amen? Um, because I'm not worried about a whole lot. Uh, or maybe it's because I work hard. Well, that's probably not it either. Solomon reminds us that in verse number 12, Solomon reminds us that the sleep of laborers or the sleep of those who work is sweet, the Bible says, whether they have little or much. But the rest of the verse number 12 teaches us, but the, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There are people today all across our land who lay awake at night worrying about what they're going to do with what God has blessed them with and how, how they're going to protect it. In verses 13 and verse 14, the Bible has something else to say about those who are seemingly involved with getting, getting, and getting. And many times I see folks in this shape, the more they get, the more they can lose, the more there is at risk. Solomon wrote this, that he has seen wealth kept, or he has seen wealth that was hoarded in by its owners thereof, and it wasn't to their good, the Bible says, it was to their hurt. It was to their hurt. It was a negative. Someone brought this to my attention many years ago. We were talking about a particular dollar bill, and, and um, I was in a place of business, it reminds me just this past week, and I was making a purchase of, of several hundred dollars of an item, and I give the, the, the cashier there some hundred dollar bills, and and, and uh, she began to look at them, and I'm thinking, dear Lord, if one of those isn't real, 
what, what have I got to say? All right? You ever think, do you ever get a little nervous when someone takes your money and they do this? You know, like, okay, if it's not real, I don't know what we're going to do here because I didn't print it, right? But if you look on the back of a, a, a lot of bills, uh, there are the wings of an eagle. A wise old man told me, he said, you know why that is on the wings of an eagle? Because our money has a way of flying away, right? Our money has a way of getting away. The Bible says in verses 15 through verses 17, the more we get, the more we leave behind. Verse 15 through verse 17. I'm not against making money. I think you should. I think you ought to pay your bills on time. Amen? Um, but listen, there are sadly many people today who, who feel like that uh, they're making a lot of things and God has blessed them and and I, listen, I enjoy the blessings of God. I'm not so spiritual that I'm going to stand here and say I don't enjoy the blessings of God. I do. And I like to be reward, rewarded just like you do uh, in this life with things. But many times in verses 15 through verses 17, uh, we must come to an understanding that the more we get, the more we leave behind. We come into this world, the Bible says, with nothing, naked from our mother's womb. And guess how we're going out? same way with nothing in our hands we will leave everything behind and somebody else has got to figure out where it's going right and that can be a crazy scene as well I uh, was doing a funeral one time and uh, we were at the at the uh, at the funeral home and uh, the funeral director told me um, give me a heads up, said, look, the, there's some family members here, and they don't get along. Well, that was an understatement of the day. He said, they're not getting along, so he said, I have no idea what to expect uh, during the service uh, because they're, they're fighting over things, and I'm thinking, good Lord, folks, can we just not get along? We're burying a loved one here. And sure enough, uh, they came in. And I was there at the, at the, at the casket uh, trying to have words of uh, encouragement and, and comfort to this family. And I want you to know, uh, they were arguing about when this service is over, I'm going to the house and Mama said this was mine. And oh no, Mama told me 30 years ago that that vase was mine. Well, there's going to be a fight over this. Well, I'm calling the police. You better get out there. I'm going right now. Dear God. We're trying to bury your loved one. Can we argue over the TV set at a later date? But that's how nutty people can get over stuff, possessions, and money, right? Well, I fixed that problem for me when I'm gone. They're going to argue over who I owe, not what I left behind. Right. <laughs> yeah, you thought I left you 10 bucks? No, you're paying my 10 bucks off when I'm out of here. The more we get, the more we leave behind. Sadly, some think they're taking it with them. You've heard it said before, you never, you never see, uh, you know, the U-Haul with all your stuff following a hearse. You know, that just doesn't happen. Now, there, are, there, there is at least one thing you can take to heaven. You know what it is? Somebody you've led to Christ. Amen? As far as all the other stuff, by the way, when I... <laughs> When I get to heaven, I've, I've read the book, and I know, how, I know how wonderful heaven is, at least to a degree. I can't fathom it in totality. Uh, can I just tell you that when I get to heaven, I don't want the junk I've left down here, amen? I'm not going to need it. I, I won't even need Walmart when I get to heaven, amen? I'm not going to need gasoline for my car. Uh, I'm not going to need all those things. And, and we're leaving all that for somebody else to deal with. But sadly, there are those who, for whatever reason, think that if I can just uh, get a few more bucks, that that's what's going to make me happy. In verses 18 through verse 20, thank God we see the purpose for money. I'm glad that God has a purpose for money, aren't you? It wasn't just to worry about and argue over. We see the purpose for
for money. So look at chapter 5, verses 18 and 20. The Bible says, Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to, and, and to enjoy the good of his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life. Notice this next phrase, which God giveth him. Can I let you know today, class, that whatever you got, it's because God in his goodness gave it to you. Amen, class? That's why you got what you got, because God gave it to you. Well, I worked for it. I'm glad you did. Who gave you health to get out of bed and go work for it? God did. Amen? So what I enjoy today is because God has given to me. For the Bible says, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor. Look at this, class. For this is the gift of God. That's awesome. Verse 20. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy. Notice this. Where's the joy at? Of his heart. Now there's a difference in where my heart is and where my billfold is. Amen? Right? Amen? Listen, this is far more important than what's on my hip pocket, right? Right? So God teaches me there that it's, there is a purpose for money and we have to have it. But my heart is far more important than dollars and cents. The purpose of money is to make us thankful. Amen, class? The purpose of money is to make us thankful. The Bible teaches that God wants us to have money, but he also wants us to remember where it came from and who sent it our way, right? He wants us to remember that. Solomon tells us it is good, it is and comely for us to enjoy the good in our work, or the good in our labor. In other words, there should be a reward uh, for going to work and for laboring. He tells us that, that, that I can enjoy my, my, my richness, to whatever degree that is. I can enjoy my wealth, to whatever degree that is, because I have accepted that as a gift, as the fruit of my labor, and I must always, always, always remember that God is the giver of it all. Everything we have today, get this class, everything that we have today is a gift from God. Because in all honesty, we don't deserve one single thing, amen? We're all sinners born into this world, right? Uh, we all come into this world uh, as people who are uh, opposed to God, and, and we must uh, hear about salvation and receive the Lord as our Savior. And then we begin to understand that the things I have in this life is not of my own doing, it's not of my own work, it's not a, a, of my sweat and toil, it's because God has chose to give it to me. And we really can't fully enjoy those things without giving thanks to God. It is God who gives us today the ability to make a dollar or ten dollars or whatever. There's an interesting verse, and you don't have to turn to it. Let me, just, let me read you a section of it. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 8, and verse number 18, the Bible says this, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. I want to make sure today that whatever I have in my life is because God chose to give it to me. Aren't you thankful today we serve a, a good and giving God? I'm thankful today, since we're talking about money, I'm thankful today, and this is a, uh, this is a kudos to you as a class and as a church, I'm thankful today that this church is known as a giving church, and people give to the cause. 
People give uh, to the things that we do. Um, and sometimes people will ask me, hey, uh, Brother George, did you, d- did you see the offering last week? And I'll say, yeah, I saw that, and praise God. Amen? Praise God for, for people who want to give. And, and people learn through the years that as we give back to God, God somehow just keeps opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out the blessings. Amen? I've heard people say, well, George, and you have to, I just... I just don't know, and listen, I can't understand it, and I didn't mean to talk about tithes and offerings today, but let's face it, rock hard bottom line, it's dollars and cents in that aspect, right? Amen? There are people today who who will say, well, man, George, I just can't somehow figure it out, but, uh, you know, I know the Bible teaches that, you know, we should tithe the 10% of our income and offerings on top of that, and and I just don't know that I can afford to do that. And in all reality, you can't afford not to. Amen out there. I don't understand the economics of it. I just know this. It's easier to do it God's way because God can take 90% and go further than if I keep 100%, 100% for me. Listen, that's not, that's not in your banker's planning book, but it's in God's. Amen? It's in God's. Everything that we have today, the ability to give back, and I pray it quite often, and I probably said it again this morning when, when, I, when I prayed for the offering, uh, that it is a good thing to be able to give back to God, because in reality, it all belongs to Him anyway, amen? It's all His anyway. Everything that I enjoy today is a gift from God. The Bible not only teaches that, there are other sections of the Bible that teach us that whatever God has blessed us with, we should be thankful for it. Amen? To whatever degree that God has blessed us with, it is God who is the giver of it all. God keeps people who remember this to be filled with joy. You want to have joy in your heart today? Just reflect on how God has used and continues to use the purpose of money to make us grateful That we can have joy in our hearts. By the way, there's another thing. You cannot buy the joy of God. Amen? It's not for sale. It comes when we obey God. So we've learned so far that everyone should know the problems with money. I think we're aware of those. Everyone should understand today that there is a purpose for money. There is a reason that God blesses us. It's so that we can be grateful and show our love back to Him the way we do business in our world. And thirdly, and I don't know how much I'll get through this, but in chapter uh, number six, we see the pain from money. This chapter reveals the consequences of violating God's uh, God's principles for the purpose of money. There are three three main kinds uh, of painful situations that are associated with money. In verses, in verses 1 through 6, the, let's read those. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men. A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth, yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and is an evil disease. If a man beget a hundred children... And live many years. I want to tell you something. That's one heck of a family, amen? (laughs) I was thinking about that. Not only only a crazy mind would think about this. Think, a hundred children. How many wives would that take? Amen? It's not one poor lady having a hundred kids, amen? (laughs) If a man begat a hundred children and live many years, so that the days of his years be many... And his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial. In other words, he never dies. I say that an untimely birth is better than he. For he that cometh in with vanity and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun, nor knoweth anything. This hath more rest than the other. Yes, though he live a a thousand years twice told, uh, yet hath he seen no good. Do not all go to one place. There's a question mark. Having money 
without meaning can be very painful. Solomon writes that he has seen God give a man riches, wealth, and honor so that he wants nothing for his soul that he desires, yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but of a stranger to come by and enjoy it. Here's a sad fact. When rich and famous people die, many of them wind up leaving it to people that they don't even know who's going to get it. I think today we must understand that Having money without meaning can be a very painful thing. It can be a very painful thing for you and for me. And how we handle it makes all the difference in the world. Then in verses 7 through verse 19, and our our time is gone this morning, but you can study these out hopefully later on today. You can see another painful event with money is, is having success without satisfaction. You see what it boils down to today, and in verses 10 through 12 of the same chapter, you see that we can have prosperity without purpose. My goodness, class, I understand this today as I study these things out about money and how to use it today. It's necessary that we have it to function in this life, but I want you to know there's something far more important than how little or how much we have. It all boils down to where is God in the equation, right, class? Listen, I would rather I would rather pass from this life and be right with God than to have all the riches of the world and not be right with God. Amen. I'd rather face God someday and know I've been honest with Him than to have all the riches of the world. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Or what shall it profit a woman if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I'm thankful that God's in my heart. Amen? Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this time of Sunday school. Father, I'm thankful today that you have blessed us. Every person in this class today has been blessed of God not only financially, materially, not only with possessions that you've allowed us to enjoy and to have, but Lord, far above all the the material things of this world, God, you have blessed us today with the promise of eternal life. I'm thankful, God, that that was a, a gift from you, that you would send your only Son that we could have eternal life in him. I'm thankful today, God, and as I look back over my life, and I'm sure those in this class would would reflect this same thought. As we look back over the years, we see how God has, has blessed us with not only things, but with the things of God more importantly. God, we just want to thank you for being so good to us. God, right now I want to pray for the service to follow. I pray for Pastor Joe as he comes to preach your word this morning. God, I pray today for someone who will be in this place that doesn't know you. God, I pray today that it would be their spiritual birthday. God, may someone walk in this place today and leave here a different person. And we'll thank you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' name I pray.